Let's begin the installation by pulling out the bottom part of the trim, right by the passenger airbag light on this model. But depending on the model you perform this installation on, you may need to use a trim removal tool and start pulling it back on the side or top. Now on 2011, the next steps apply for all vehicles. You need a drill, ratchet, or screwdriver with a Torx T20 bit. There are four Torx T20 screws. In this case, I'm going to use a drill. Here is what one of the screws look like. Now let's speed through the rest. Since these are the only screws that we will be removing, let's put them in the cup holder so we don't lose them. Now the old radio should easily slide out, like this. The back side of my unit has a quad lock, a dual antenna, and a satellite radio connector. Some units will have a navigation connector, and some won't have a satellite radio connector. You will want to remove all of the connectors. For the quad lock, press down and pull it back like this, and it will come right out. For the other connectors, just push on this little tab and finagle it out like this. Now you can put the old radio to the side. Now let's bring in the new radio. This radio does not have satellite or digital radio or navigation, as I said earlier. However, you can do both of these through Apple CarPlay and Android Auto nowadays, and better too, especially with Google Maps. Connect the dual to single antenna adapter to the dual antenna, and then connect it to the radio. Now let's plug back in the quad lock connector. Click it in like this, and make sure it's in all the way. You could have issues if it's not connected all the way. Before you put the screws back in, make sure the unit turns on and works. Now let's put the screws back in, and the trim piece can clip right on. Make sure not to break it though. So that's the installation. Okay. Pretty straightforward. You, okay, you, you don't have to, to do this every time. You don't have to, to turn it on from uh, the button. But uh, this time it's because I use the button to turn it off. It, it will display the clock, you know. So we have, uh, we have the main, main screen. As you can see, my phone is already connected. And it's playing uh, music via Bluetooth. But uh, let's start with the radio part, you know. As you can see, the radio, it's... All firmware, it's very, very, very similar to the to the original, if not the original one, the the, the one that they use in the factory. The only difference, um, radio-wise, is that uh, is that uh, you don't have the thumbnails for the radio station. It has a very, very good reception. Uh, as you can see, it almost instantly uh, finds the radio station. Everything uh, you have the 5, 10, 15 presets where you can save your stations. I have my my first five saved and uh, I'll show you how to how to save a new new station. Let's say you wanna you wanna save this station. You just press and hold the memory location that you want. Simple as that. Uh, <clears throat> it has AM FM radio, no dub radio, no no digital radio because uh, as I can as I said it's an aftermarket market unit. No no digital radio here but yeah, I can live with this. Uh, you you can you have your station list right here as you can see it it does display the names of the stations but not uh, all of them just the ones that i saved but as soon as you uh, as you find the radio station it will display the name of the station and the, all the data for it mm. okay so this is uh, you can do manual tuning or you can use the the this uh, how do you call it you can use this button to, to to tune or do once you are happy with the station you uh, if if you know the frequency you know okay so this is manual tuning this is uh, these are the memory locations uh, let's go to media as I said uh, before you have a USB you have memory card MP3 are supported as well as FLAC. I don't even, I don't really know all the, the supported file types, but I guess the the most of the file types available are uh, are supported. You know, you can play music as I said via USB, memory card, or auxiliary port. Here you can select your uh, your uh, source. Right now I'm using Bluetooth uh, Bluetooth music, Bluetooth streaming for copyright. Uh, concerns I cannot share you the the track that's currently playing you can go uh, yeah, select your tracks or your playlist or whatever you you want just give it a little bit to, to load it is uh, sorry about that it will load every every track every song you have in your uh, in your phone it, Okay, 
the only downside of uh, of the app of, or streaming music via Bluetooth, it's uh, but I guess many many many, if not all the the head units on the market today, you cannot scroll or as you can see, it says function not available. You just have to to let the music play, you know. Uh, obviously, you've got the phone. You have the the possibility to dial the number directly and then uh, and then call. You you have your contacts that uh, they already been loaded. Once you you connect the the phone the, via Bluetooth, you have your last calls and everything. Uh, you have your SMS text. I don't have any right now because I, I like to keep my phone clean. Uh, you can add your four favorite numbers. Okay, let's uh, let's see the settings because uh, we'll go to the app uh, at the end because I need to connect my phone. So in settings you you have sound. You can select your uh, all volumes. You know the the start of volume, the speed dependent, the volume increase. Uh, so when you increase the speed, going uh, going with the the vehicle, the the volume will increase depending on how you set it. You know. Audio lowering is for the parking system, parking assistant system. So when the, the parking sensors activate, the the volume lows down, so you can hear the the beep for the sensors. Okay, the aux volume, as you can probably guess, it's the the volume that uh, that's allowed to come in through the aux port, and the Bluetooth uh, audio as well. It's the volume that uh, the gain of the volume, if you want, that's allowed to, to get in from the Bluetooth devices. Okay, uh, balance and, and fader pretty straightforward. You can you can move this uh, as you prefer, or you can go with the, the arrows for front, back, left, right, or you can turn back in the center, and everything will be bus, middle, treble. Pretty straightforward. You 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 can move those around, or you can go plus or minus. You have the screen. You have. Uh, you can select this option, and uh, the screen will turn off uh, every 10 seconds if you don't uh, if you don't touch it. The brightness, you you can adjust the bright the brightness of the the screen. Display the time in the standby. Uh, it's uh, it's the clock that we saw in the beginning. As you can see, the unit is very very responsive and uh, works uh, works really well. You know. Uh, okay, the left, and uh, as you can see, you have the the option the the three options. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, or MirrorLink. Uh, let's connect an Android device, my phone, and see how this works. As you can see, you will need an USB cable, and you have to connect it to the phone. It is not, uh, it's not going to work wirelessly. So we go Android Auto. I have pre-set up my my phone with this unit, so. As you can see, it takes you right to the Google Maps. You can use Google Maps on this, but probably many of you already know how uh, Android Auto works. Uh, okay, here you can uh, you can type an address. You can select from your uh, okay. My contacts are very important. You can select from from your history of uh, locations, or you can type a new location. Okay. As you can see, it uh, it found the route, and you press here. Head north towards Viale. Head right into Viale Torino. Okay, sorry about that. I didn't know that uh, the volume was cranked up. This is the home button for the Android Auto. You press it, and you see all of the uh, the apps that are, that I currently have and are compatible with uh, with Android Auto. Uh, WhatsApp and Messenger and SMS text, they are compatible with compatible compatible with Android Auto, but they won't appear uh, in the apps list as uh, a safety measure, you know, because uh, you cannot drive in the text and drive, you know. But you will be able to receive your your messages, your texts, your everything, and you'll be you'll be able to to reply as well, you know. How do you do that? You use Google Assistant. So you can say, okay, Google, and when you receive messages, you they will be displayed here, and they can be played in the in the speakers by tapping play. And um, yeah, this is Android Auto. As you can see, you can use YouTube Music. You can go your mix. You can go home. 
you can go, let's say, uh, hot new music. Okay. Let's say best new pop. Okay. And this is YouTube music. Weather. Right now in Lodi, it's a the ability of the, the head unit to to work with the optic park system. As you can see, the the graphic uh, games up when you when you go into into park mode. Uh, it, there is a possibility to install the the rear view camera. I will install it, but it not uh, it did not yet arrive, and I will make another video about uh, installing the the rear view camera, and we'll go into into detail uh, the next time.